Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at AQA A-level chemistry and we're going to be looking at strong acids and pH calculations. By the end of this lesson then we should be able to do the following. We should be able to define and identify Bronsted Lowry acids and bases, identify monoprotic and diprotic acids, calculate the pH of monoprotic and diprotic strong acids, and also do the same for dilutions of a strong acid. Let's start off then by looking at Bronsted Lowry acids and bases, and let's just think about a definition. A Bronsted Lowry acid is a proton donor. Now, because a hydrogen ion which has lost an electron is essentially a proton, we can also say that it's a H plus donor. And a Bronsted Lowry base, well, that is a proton acceptor or a H plus acceptor. Let's see what we mean by looking at a couple of examples. In this first example, then, the hydrochloric acid, the HCl on the left here, donates its hydrogen ion to the OH minus of the sodium hydroxide. Therefore, in this example, our hydrochloric acid is acting as the acid, and the OH minus is here is acting as the base. Because it dissolves in water, we also call it an alkali. Overall, we have the reaction H plus, plus OH minus, giving us H2O. And this is what we describe as a neutralization reaction. If we look at our next example, we've got HNO3 plus NH3, and that's making NH4 plus and NO3 minus. So the HNO3 is donating the hydrogen ion here, and so the HNO3, the nitric acid, is acting as the acid, and the NH3 is acting as the base because it is the one accepting the proton. We're now going to move our discussion on to look at monoprotic and diprotic acids. So a monoprotic acid is one that releases one hydrogen ion per molecule. Examples here would include hydrochloric acid, HCl, because that dissociates to form 1H plus and 1Cl minus when dissolved in water, or nitric acid, HNO3, where when dissolving in water and dissociating to 1 hydrogen ion and one nitrate ion. Diprotic acids, on the other hand, in the name, release two hydrogen ions per molecule. And we can think of examples here as H2SO4, or sulfuric acid, which dissociates to form 2H+, plus, plus SO4, 2 minus. Or perhaps a dicarboxylic acid, where we might have something like ethane dioic acid, where we have two carboxylic acid groups, and they're dissociating, actually this would be a weak acid, to form two hydrogen ions and two a single ethane Dioatine. Importantly, our diprotic acids forming two hydrogen ions per molecule. pH then, and how we undertake pH calculations, is done in the following way. The pH is simply a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration. And because the hydrogen ion 
concentration varies greatly, it's helpful to make it into more manageable numbers that we actually measure the power of the hydrogen ion concentration and therefore pH is actually the negative log of the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. It's a really important expression and we'll be using it throughout our pH calculations. And we can rearrange the equation of the pH to work out the hydrogen ion concentration and that is equal to 10 to the power of the minus pH. So let's just have a look at a couple of simple examples here. And we're going to look at these examples by calculating the pH of strong monoprotic and diprotic acids. The first thing to point out that a strong acid is one in which we can say fully dissociates in water. And this is really important when we are looking at calculating the pH. Let's assume that we had a strong acid such as nitric acid. And we're told that the concentration of the nitric acid is 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed. The question is, what is the pH? Well, in order to do this, we need to know the concentration of the hydrogen ions. And because the nitric acid is a strong acid, we assume that it fully dissociates. And therefore, the concentration of the hydrogen ions, we can say to be equivalent to the concentration of the nitric acid, and therefore also equal to 0 0.05 mole dm minus 3. And therefore, the pH of the solution is equal to the minus log of the concentration of the hydrogen ions, which is 0 0.05. And we put that into our calculator and we get out 1.30. A couple of things to point out here. We always give our pH calculations to two decimal places unless we are asked to otherwise in a question. We can also work this the other way. Perhaps we're told that the pH of a hydrochloric acid solution is 2.45 and the question here might be what is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid well we can from our equation we can rearrange our pH equals minus log 10 of H plus to give us H plus is equal to 10 to the minus pH We put this into our calculators and we get a concentration here of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. And since the strong acid is going to fully dissociate to H plus and Cr minus, we can also say that the concentration of the hydrogen ions is going to be equivalent to the concentration of the HCl and therefore in this case is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3 mole dm minus 3.
This was all true for our monoprotic acid. And this time we're now going to look at the diprotic acid examples. So if we were to look at diprotic, we might have H2SO4. Indeed, we might have the concentration of H2SO4, which is equal to 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. The question is, what is the pH? Well, since the H2SO4 is a strong acid, it's going to fully dissociate to 2 times the H plus, plus SO4, 2 minus. We can assume that the concentration of H2SO4 is going to be equal to, sorry, 2 times the concentration of H2SO4 is going to be equal to the H plus concentration. And therefore, the H plus concentration in this case is going to be 2 times 0 0.100 moles, which is equal to 0.20 moles per decimeter cubed of H plus. Therefore, the pH of this solution is equal to minus log of 0.2, which equals 0 0.699, which is 0 0.70 to two decimal places. As we saw before, we could also work this the other way around. Perhaps we've got a H2SO4 solution where we've got a pH is equal to 0 0.30. The question is, what is the concentration of the H2SO4? Well, the concentration here, we first of all, we can work out the hydrogen ion concentration because that is going to be equal 10 to the minus 0 0.30 from our equation above. This gives us a hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to 0 0.50 moles per decimeter cubed. And since the hydrogen ion concentration to H2SO4 concentration is two to one, the concentration of H2SO4 is going to be equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions divided by 2, which is equal to 0 0.5 divided by 0, divided by 2, which is 0 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed. The final thing to consider in this section then is dilutions of strong acids. And here we're going to use our term that we saw from last year, C1V1 equals C2V2 for dilutions. And we'll use our example here, calculate the pH of the solution formed when 100 cm cubed of water is added to 50 cm cubed of 0.1 mole dm minus 3 of HNO3. So to work out our new concentration of HNO3, we're going to have the initial concentration times by the initial volume divided by the final volume. And in this case, we would have 0.1 multiplied by 50 divided by the total volume here of 150, which gives us 0. 0 0.0333 and then our pH is equal to minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration well in this case HNO3 is a monoprotic acid and therefore the concentration of the acid is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ions so we have minus log 
of 0 0.0333 and we get the final equal to 1.48 again to two decimal places. Okay, so after this lesson, you should now be able to define and identify Bronsted, Lowry acids and bases, identify monoprotic and diprotic acids, calculate the pH of monoprotic and diprotic strong acids, and also do the dilution of a strong acid. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.